Yay! <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, you just called me reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I was supposed to. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hello. to the Hello. Hello. And welcome to all our viewers, of course. Um, glad you could join us today. Um, we've got an amazing um, lineup today of our amazing guests uh, as we go through the um, title of and, and talking about retailing beyond the pandemic. So we have I've got Alan Martin. Hello, Alan. Hello. Ben and Mel. Hello. And we've got Jason and John. Hello. Morning. Um, so if I just come to you quickly, three retailers, well, wonderful guests, thank you for being here today. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, when we had a quick chat, um, it, it's just a great way to connect with other retailers who are listening in today, who may, you know, Maybe without the show happening, which we will know in a week's time what we're doing with the show, by the way, everybody. So no more emails. I will let you know in a week. Um, but a, a nice way to connect retailers and, and share your experiences and also what we can you know, get out of this pandemic retailing wise as we go forward. So maybe you could just start individually just telling us about, you know, when you had your first store and how many stores, etc. So, Alan, can we start with you? Yeah, sure. Um, I've got three stores currently. Um, they've been around for donkey's years since about uh, 84, I think. Uh, but we bought the two Food for Thought stores in 2008 and the Olivers in Kew Garden uh, 2018. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been... mix of your store, Alan? S sorry, say again, Tom. Your mix of your store? Um, I, it, it's... Kind of a mixed bag, really. Um, Oliver's is more, more food. It's a, it is a foodie store with much less space devoted to uh, supplements, um, herbals, uh, and makeup, skincare, etc. Uh, food for thought is uh, much more uh, towards VMS uh, with lesser amount of, of food and lesser amount of fresh food. Uh, Oliver's also has uh, our brand new coffee bar as well. So, which has been going really well. Uh, oh, we'll talk about that later. That's exciting development. So, Len and Mel, and you, if I may nip to you. Um, so, we're um, Best Health Food Shop. We did our first one in 2016, so only about five years ago. Um, we've now got five shops. Um, we opened another one in 2017, and then I think it was three in 2018 or 19, 19 three in one year, which was fun. Um, but yeah, so we're continuing continuously looking to expand, but we've got five at the moment. And uh, the the mix is very tricky because it does, like Alan said, it it varies per shop. But primarily, we try to make all the shops the primary thing is food, and the supplements and everything else, you know, are just that they sort of supplement that. So we have tried to make the food at least fifty percent of what we're doing, and then everything else, you know, sort of varies in percentage um, that way. Um, but yeah, so it does it, because they're in they're in locations across Kent and Sussex, but each one has a very its very own demographic. So you just have to work with that. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's great. Okay, well now to our new independent. Um, retailers we're very delighted to welcome Jason and John and quite an intriguing um, newbies to our lovely family so tell us about yourselves Jason and John. Uh, we opened our first store in uh, 2020 <laughs> uh, which is Omskirk in August uh, and our second store we opened uh, in November um, that is quite a, a big store uh, you know when we looked at it we were like oh this is, this is quite a biggie, this one, within a shopping centre. Um, but it has performed extremely well um, because that area has never had any, any health food store um, ever in its existence. So uh, got, got a good following there. Yeah, and yeah. then um, obviously our mix is obviously healthy foods and vitamins, uh, supplements, um, frozen, chilled, um, beauty range as well uh, within our stores, yeah. Well, welcome. What a, what a time to open some stores through the pandemic. We're going to be intrigued to hear about how that's got on in a minute. So if I can just start the questions, if I may, because uh, well, I think what we'd start with is um, how you've all been coping with the lockdown. Uh, but in, uh, what I'm more interested in is, has there been any differentiations of, over the three lockdowns at all to your business? Um, Alan, can we start with you? Yeah, I, I think this lockdown has been harder, uh, just generally. Um, 
I think the the, the first one we kind of we kind of sailed through. There was there was almost that kind of uh, thing of people coming together and uh, you know you know the, the the blitz effect. You know everybody pulling together mm -hmm. and helping each other. Um, we the the biggest uplift in home deliveries uh, during that first lockdown. So there was a a huge demand for people who weren't uh, maybe shielding, weren't going out, who, who wanted home deliveries. Uh, I think the <coughs> lockdown, uh, it was a short one and, you know, I think people were just, they just wanted to get that over. They were looking forward to Christmas. Uh, so we seen a, a bit of a decline then in people wanting home deliveries or, or extras that we'd provided from the first lockdown. This current lockdown has just been a bit of a, Paying, I think um, it's been really tough. We've uh, found it harder. I, I, I personally, I've I've found it harder just mm. trying to to um, sell through it. So I think we're we're clinging on to these dates that are kind of five weeks mm. apart. You know, just waiting for things to open up. Uh, particularly, I would think about Kingston. Kingston as a town has suffered really badly from way back before. Uh, the pandemics have gone back to maybe 2017, where there was a bit of, de uh, of a decline. So the the pandemic has hit Kingston really, really hard. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of town high streets pre-pandemic were suffering, weren't they, Alan? So that that yeah. that really increased kind of the effect. The pandemic yeah. amplified what's happening. Okay, so Len and Mel, how are you getting on? How have you got on over the three? And is there any noticeable differences in the three lockdowns for you? Yeah, I completely agree with Alan there that this one's definitely been felt like the longest and the hardest. Um, exactly that. The first one, everyone rallied together. We you know we were doing deliveries and collections and it all felt very um, like like Alan said, everyone had come together. The true spirit of it all. The third one, everyone's just fed up to the back teeth with it. Um, you've seen stress levels of customers soar in this one, much more so. Um, just uh, uh, hanging on to, just to get out the other side of it. Um, deliveries and collections have been practically nothing, but footfall has been dire in this one than it ever was in the in the first two. Um, people just, you know, just not coming out. You know, it, it just hit at a really bad time. But coming out of Christmas, everyone was so disappointed about Christmas. January, you know, which is always quite a weird month. People, it, it just felt like that sort of dragged on and it's carried on dragging on. Um, so yeah, I completely agree with Alan. This third one has been definitely the worst and we're just every day notching off, waiting for the next thing to open and the next thing to happen mm -hmm. to try and restart it, definitely. Okay, so we'll go to Jason and John, but of course, uh, Jason and John, have you experienced three specific lockdowns or because when is one? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, the first store of obviously Romsberg opened in August, um, and yeah, difficult going, really difficult going. Um, sales were not really there as much as we thought it would be, but it was to be expected. Um, the footfall wasn't there. Then when the second lockdown happened, obviously the one back in the end of December, the beginning of January, although the footfall hasn't been there, our sales have grown, probably have half doubled. Um, so we're getting big expense. Um, which has been fantastic for us. Um, but it's actually differentiated between the two stores. So the Onscred store in the town has traded a little bit quieter, whereas um, our store in the shopping centre has been a lot busier. Oh. Um, so it's weird. It's, there's more footfall in the shopping centre than what there is actually in the towns. So, um, unusual. Yeah, yeah, very, very different for us. Um, but yeah, sales of like, you know, way expected our expectations yeah. for the. Uh, I think there was one week in January where Onscape dropped. Yeah, uh, yeah, considerably. Yeah. And you're like, oh, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. That, you know, you, you carried. What made you. What, can I ask you just a quick question about um, what made you. Did you not think the delaying of the opening through the pandemic or. No, um, we'd already delayed opening our first store. Yeah. Um, it should have opened in January, um, you know, 2020. So we delayed that one um, to, to August, which is quite a big delay. Mm. And everything was in, in place. So the, the second store, um, we had delayed it by a week of opening. 
um, that was only to do with with obviously the pandemic affecting my stock deliveries and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, but no, um, we just carried carried yeah, on. Yeah, we carried yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so let me just come to the the, the next question. I'm intrigued to know is about um, obviously you decided to open, and uh, what I'm interested to know from all three of you again is is what changes you've made as a retailer through the pandemic, whether it be physical or you know retailing. So. Jason and John, did you two make any changes, you know, knowing you're in the pandemic to what you'd planned to do, um, you know, opening up in the pandemic versus non? Did you, you know, did any of you strategy change? The only difference we made really was to make sure that the stores were actually COVID safe, you know, so social distancing and stuff like that, which like all retailers have had to do. So that was the only difference that we made. And um, apart from that, we didn't make any changes whatsoever. Um, our knowledge and background within the vitamins and supplement side is quite extensive. So we were quite confident in our sales in that anyway, and we knew that the sales would actually go up on that side. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Right, Alan, can I ask you the same question? You know, what changes did you make up physical and also, you know, um, any that you're going to maintain, you know, post-pandemic? Yeah, I think the, uh, as uh, uh, Jess and John said, uh, it, it was ensuring you were COVID safe. So it, it, it was physically changing the layout of all three stores to make yeah. it more manoeuvrable for customers, uh, you know, particularly those who, who may have buggies or, or were in wheelchairs or whatever. So making sure the, the stores were COVID safe, um, it meant taking out uh, some display areas and shelving uh, to to give a sense of more room so that people actually felt that there was space and I, I have to say that I think that is one area that we, we will keep there, there is something about having space when you go in and being you know like a landing area where you can come in and you're not hit with uh, shelving or displays so I think that's definitely something we'll keep the other big thing that we uh, instigated for all three stores was applying for licenses to have tables and chairs outside. So oh. they, they were granted for all three stores. And we've currently just renewed those now until September of 2022. Um, and that, that actually kept us going when we, we were able to serve um, drinks, you know, so even the two stores that didn't have a coffee bar, we were still able to serve herbal teas, sandwiches, and encourage people to sit outside. And right. that, that was a big uh, boon for us. We and, that, and, and that was a direct result of the pandemic. You, you didn't have the chairs outside no, before. We didn't. Something no. that when the, the government was encouraging people to uh, uh, die in alfresco and all the restaurants and bars were out on the pavements, I thought, well, we've got to join them, you know? Um, so at that point, we didn't really have an offer uh, in Food for Thought, but we were going for the tables and chairs, <laughs> then we were going to bloody well make sure we had an offer. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, obviously at the moment we, we, you know, we can't have tables and chairs, uh, but the, the minute we're able to put those back out, we, they'll, they'll be out with a, a bang and we'll be encouraging people to come and visit. And we're already working on a, 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 a kind of spring going into summer menu. So we'll, we'll be doing it much uh, more efficiently when we're able to put them back out again. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Len and Mel, how about you guys? We did the same sort of thing. Our shops, uh, most of our stores are, are very small. So we, you know, we weren't able to do things like one way <laughs> systems and things like that because they're just not big enough. So, but it did involve quite a big change, um, you know, putting screens up and masks and things like that. And we've had to, you know, we, it's for staffing as much as you know limiting the amount of customers that could come in but also keeping the staff safe and that they were able to social distance so we've had to change a lot of how they work and how we accept deliveries and how we you know to, just to make it safe for everyone so it's been a bit of a logistical nightmare when you're working with very small space um, and we did the things like deliveries and collections and things like that which probably you know we can't wait to get to a point where we can rip down the horrible ugly screens and get rid of the masks and all that but the delivery side of things you know might be something that we continue to do in the future and the only other thing that we did was um reacting to 
customer demand was we put in fresh fruits, fresh fruit and vegetables in the summer last year um, in all the stores that were there before, because we realized that there was demand for that. And in one of the stores, we got an alcohol license. <laughs> so that um, we which added to, we've got alcohol licenses in a couple, but you know, people just wanted wine. <laughs> yeah, it also helped with the customers not having to go to multiple places, mm. you know, when some of them were afraid to come out and all of that, they could then get everything in, in yeah. our store. Fresh, chilled, everything. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, obviously that they are things that we'll keep, um, but the other things I have to say, I'll be glad to see the back of them. <laughs> Well, it's no surprise in the organic market report that organic wine is probably one of the biggest categories of go growth. So yeah. uh, Non-alcoholic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so stay with you, uh, Len and Mel. With the next question, I'm interested in um, these changes and developments you're making and all three of you making. But have you seen any kind of buying habits changing or consumer priorities changing, you know, from your regular customers to maybe some newbies? Tell us about those. I think definitely at the beginning, in the first lockdown, um, when there was all this panic buying and these, you know, suddenly everyone wanted yeast or everyone wanted honey and it, you know, you would, you just couldn't keep up with it. It just seemed to change on a weekly basis. Everyone was obsessed with baking and flour and, and, you know, you're trying to, trying to keep up with, with that sort of thing. Um, but after that, um, you know, you saw a big rise. We saw a big rise in supplement sales at the beginning. We've actually found that supplement sales have, have, tapered off quite considerably and I feel that that's not because people aren't taking supplements it's because people are going online and you know that so that's a battle that we've got to face coming out the other side of this which is going to be hard so definitely we felt that the food side has been the the mainstay it's definitely been the thing that if we had been primarily supplements 90 percent supplements and only a little bit of food I don't know that we most of our shops would have survived so the food has definitely been um the the constant um whereas supplements have gone like this toiletries and household just went out the window it, it's but it's been really hard it's so erratic sales are so erratic some days are great some days are awful you there are no patterns i feel like after the last year you couldn't really base any decisions mm. on on buying based on sales from last from the last 12 months because it's just been peculiar and i think it won't be for another six to 12 months when it starts to you start to really see when everyone goes back to work and things like that when it all starts to go back to normal where that buying pattern will land because i think it's just so extraordinary at the moment that it's hard to base any decisions on it personally. Okay, Alan, over to you about, you know, consumer priorities and buying habits. And I'm interested if you've had any, you know, have you noticed any sort of the, you know, kind of age range of new customers and new to regulars? Um, yeah, I, I, first of all, I, I, com, uh, I, I agree completely with Mel. We, we experienced much the same. Um, the, the, the big, uh, it, it was, you know, food glorious, food, uh, they they kept us alive as as well and survive uh, surviving through it, um, and we've ramped up the amount of space in food for thought that we have, uh, uh, you know, for food now uh, at the expense of reducing space for BMS herbals, uh, skincare, mm. etc. Um, the, 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 we we introduced meat and fish uh, mm. and vegetables into both food for thoughts and. Traditionally, that was something that was an area that we never went, and there was there was a bit of a a bit of a kickback from the the hardcore vegans. Uh, we we've seen that market all but disappear for us. Uh, the, the the vegan stronghold that we had, particularly in Kingston, has gone. Um, it, it's been replaced by the, the people who want the fish, the meat, uh, the fresh produce, eggs, uh, dairy. Um, so we we've actually found a, a completely new category for us mm. that we probably would never ever have introduced to the stores if it wasn't for the pandemic. And to answer your, your point specifically, we are seeing a much younger age group come in. Um, mm. And traditionally, they might have been the, 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 the more vegan tuned in people, uh, but they're not. Um, I think uh, the, the organic's definitely top of the, the pile. It's organic first. Um, right. A lot of the vegan products that we were selling were organic anyway, so people are willing to sacrifice 
uh, something to get something that they feel is maybe more beneficial. Yeah. To organics. Lovely. Thank you for that. It's interesting. And um, yeah, we'll be doing the uh, health of the nation lockdown survey next uh, um, session. So it'd be interesting to see what they, you know, that feedback is. Jason and John. So nothing to compare to. But tell me about your kind of you know, your customer and your your demographic and, you know, have you seen, I mean, in the short time you've been open, have you seen any changes at all? Um, we are attracting a lot younger people now. Um, right. Obviously, one particular, the first store we open is more um, the elder generation. Um, that's, it, that's its sort of format, but it is a student town as well. So we are attracting a lot more uh, students we've noticed that over the last definitely the last month and a half right. um with with the the food obviously we do have a, a a good range of foods and that that range has increased considerably but on the vitamin side um we now stock over 400 um different types of vitamins um due to demand um, and that's with like people requesting certain things or actually you know looking at what's new on the market um so it's it, it is hard to gauge for us because obviously we're new yeah. we have seen um, a big increase on the vitamin side definitely yeah. yeah so um with all the retailers here joining us today um i'm thinking about any initiatives you've implemented i mean we've talked we've gone you know you've mentioned some of them but i'd, I'd just like to bring you back to that because i think it's nice to share with other retailers about you know things you've initiated um through the pandemic that you're really going to keep sorry Alan, i'll go to you because you mentioned a coffee shop you've, you've started a coffee shop in one of your stores yes yeah yeah uh we we actually opened that about um 10 days before the first lockdown uh so we were all geared up ready to go then the lockdown came and we, we actually closed the coffee bar uh until we felt we'd get a handle on how to actually operate it properly through you know uh, through social distancing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we didn't really reopen that until uh, I think it was in July when the uh, non-essentials reopened again. Uh, so we kept our store open, but not the coffee bar. But the coffee bar has been phenomenal, and uh, currently we're selling probably between a hundred and hundred and twenty cups of coffee a day. Um, at the and moment. What would you say, Alan, what would you say to the retailers about that? Is it easy to do? Is it? No, it, well, no, I, it wasn't actually. I, um, and I, I think I, it was much harder than we thought. So it's <laughs> having to make work. Um, uh, we, we're really having to work at it. So I'm not saying uh, go out and open a, a, a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and no, we, we invested a lot of uh, money, time and effort into it. And uh, for a long time, I was the only barista. Uh, honestly, I, I had headphones on in bed at night watching YouTube videos and how to make the perfect latte cappuccino <laughs> uh, flat white um, because we, we couldn't find anybody. We, you know, there was nobody to work yeah. there. Um, so that, that, that wouldn't be my first go-to thing to invest in. Um, but we're actually seeing the results of it now. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're doing well. We've got quite a quite a following uh yeah. with, with a really nice coffee rosters uh in best in chiswick uh mm -hmm. which is only one stop away from where we are uh, so we've got a nice kind of uh, uh thing going on there and that, that would be my uh, uh, apart from the coffee bar if i was to give a message to uh, uh the guys out there it would be to collaborate to, to that, that that's our big thing you know have a look around and see who you can work with and we've made some amazing collaborations, particularly this uh, latest lockdown uh, with gyms, fitness centers that are all closed. And we got together with a number of them and we created a little magazine um, uh, to hand out free to customers with tips and uh, menu ideas, food ideas, uh, because, you know, gyms in January are probably their busiest time you know so yeah so what well, yeah, if, if you send me a copy of that i'll um, the other thing, um after the recording yeah. so all the retailers <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> so anybody can download it and have a look retailers when you're watching so let's go to len and mel what, what would you share with our retailers about you know initiatives you've implemented that 
you'll carry on and you'd recommend potentially? I think um, the big one was the fruit and veg that Mel, and Mel mentioned earlier. You know, that's a major percentage of our sales now and it's a really big draw. You know, it's all organic, it's unpackaged. So, it, you know, it's... Uh, so, working with local suppliers and it's local suppliers so now we are a one-stop shop where people can come in get everything they need you know we used to have it before we'd get products from our shop and ourselves and we'd be like well i can't make a meal because i need some fruit and veg to go with it so <laughs> we're now it's now it's a complete uh, one-stop shop the other thing uh, we were looking at is brands and products that support retailers and you know a lot have started to go into the supermarkets and a lot have gone online and are selling the, the manufacturers are starting to sell their own products online cheaper than we can sell them for or even buy it from them. Yeah. And, you know, that's a real big kick in the teeth for us. You know, we've supported them all this time. So there are a lot of there are a lot of other brands out there who are very focused just on the independent retailers and their ethos is we're not going to sell online and we're not going to sell in supermarkets. And yeah. we've done a lot of research, research into those brands and have decided to phase out or swap out where we can yeah. where we can with those brands instead of the others. We want to support them because we yes, know they're going to yeah. support us. And they're good quality, you know, they're affordable. They offer all the same things. Um, and, and it makes it unique that customers will come into our store, you know, for for those because they won't be able to find them elsewhere. Yeah, that, in, sorry, that sounds really interesting because what you would normally do is stick with a, you know, a, a very well-branded range mm. of natural health supplies mm. and what and so what from what you're saying you're going to be more aggressive in turning that those brands around in your store changing those brands yeah we're yeah. doing a lot of we've done an, an awful lot of research you know over the last year where where we've had time to sort of it's given you a bit of extra time to focus on these things um you know and look at trying to research best you know without the note show and things it's been a lot harder to to source new products and find new su suppliers and things but it's given us a, a new focus to try and work much more closely with the, those suppliers and manufacturers that are supporting the independent mm -hmm. retailer which is hard to find mm -hmm. um and it has taken a lot of research and it's not to say that we're in a position where you could just drop all the big brands and go, but you know, there is definitely a shift coming. And I think that this last year where people have focused on trying to shop low and, you know, supporting the independent shops in their high street rather than going to bigger supermarkets. Look to work with brands and suppliers that are supporting us back it, it, you know it, because yeah. now we've got to try and we've steer people away unit. from yeah. online and that's a really big hill to climb and yeah. so the only way we feel to do that is to have brands in store that people can't get online people can't get anywhere else and that you're that's what people are, are, yeah. are coming into your store for yeah. to for innovative new brands yeah. new things going on um, and I think it keeps that's... the manufacturers on their toes as well. Hopefully, and, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's a great observation. And funny, in the, in the last fortnight, Amazon have actually opened up the first brick and mortar store. So we're watching yeah. that uh, very close, uh, close at the moment. But so, uh, Jason and John, um, you know, they were talking about the natural health specifically there, and, and the supplements. And I, and I know we've spoken before. You have your own range of health uh, natural health supplements range tell us about a bit about that that's quite unique <laughs> um we obviously do a lot I know you pass it on. um we do a lot of own label it was it's an important thing we thought originally was to actually like you said um to do our own brand um because then you you're not fighting about you know these brands that are doing it cheaper online so like with the vitamin range and the food range, there's a big following for it. You know, there's certain people now out there um, that will only buy our vitamins or will only buy our branded cereal. Yeah. Um, so that does protect the business, um, you know, and is, is definitely growing uh, by word of mouth. And obviously we use social media that to push them, push that sort of, you know, the customer comments that say about certain things. Yeah. Um, and then on to very much onto local suppliers as well. Um, that is one of our biggest keys, is that we do as much local as possible. We do have a close working relationship with them. Um, you know, like the kabusha that we do is made locally uh, and he's won multiple awards. 
Um, and the, again, the, the repeat purchase and the customers who come in just, you know, not just for the Kabusha, but they obviously purchase more when they're in. Um, so the local brands work for us very, very It well. does. I mean, our customers like the fact that they, we've sourced our products locally as much as we can. So for Nutri Kabusha, they love that. It's like a national award winning. They like it because it's local. It comes from their town. They like supporting us. We support, obviously, them and the communities. They support us back. The same with Spin Bakery, Beauty Care, absolutely fantastic. They support us. We support them back. We're supporting the community, but we're also supporting our British industry as well. Mm. And that's yeah. our ethic through us. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, everybody. Well, look, I can't believe half an hour's gone already. <laughs> and I've still got loads of questions to ask you myself. So maybe we're going to do part two, uh, if everybody uh, can let me know. Uh, I'm going to go over some uh, questions and answers, though, from our viewers at the moment. Um, let me have a look, see what I can think. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anybody in particular here. Um, cash flow. Did any of you choose to reduce stock levels to help with this? We reduced stock levels by 24% overall, cut slow sellers dramatically. Um, what do you think? What did you say to that, if I may? Yeah, mm. absolutely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just basically a constant, um, constant monitoring. You know, things have been so, so erratic and so tight. You, you can't afford to just keep... Um, you know your stock levels you've got to just be keeping an eye on it all the time and moving it around it's a constant moving target um, but you can't have your cash tied up in stock that isn't selling can you so um, yeah I think everyone should if they haven't already do that exercise absolutely <laughs> yeah. um, so I've got here um, this is an interesting question um, about loyalty cards and discounts for spend levels um, do you implement that or is it something you've done and, you know, you, you would do again or what's your thoughts on that? Should we say to Alan first? Uh, we, we, have a, we have a loyalty uh, scheme for the coffee bar, the, the usual, you know, nine cups and get the 10 to 1 free. Uh, we've tried various loyalty schemes in the stores before and abandoned them. And it's just not something uh, that we feel has really worked for us. Right. You know, so... Um, I, I think if, if it works for you, you've got something that you can implement. Uh, you're happy with it, do it, but for us, it's not something we would look at. Yeah. Len, do you have one? In your do you have not a loyalty card? Or yes, yeah, yeah. we've got a, a loyalty reward program. Reward program. Um, whether it you know really works or not, it's hard to tell. The only thing um, we like to think is it does. It helps set us apart from online as well, but. Once people are customers of ours, they will come back to us, you know, for the reward points and they get a five pound voucher when they hit a hundred points, I think it is to spend in store. Um, so just an, another incentive to come back, uh, come back to keep coming back to the shop. I think it, especially when we're opening new stores, mm. um, uh, we find it is quite a draw. Um, it's quite a good, uh, you know, it's a good marketing, it's good advertising and it does it does sort of create that loyalty to your store. Um, yeah. But so, you know, I think on the, on the whole, it, it does work for us. Um, yeah. And, you know, but it, you know, like Len says, it's hard to actually pinpoint <laughs> exactly, but we think it does. You get the email address and you get a loyalty card. Yeah. And that's basically why we did it, but it was more for, to, to grow our database so that we can market to that database. Um, you know, so it kind of, you've got to give somebody something for them to give you their email address in the first place so um so yeah it works on that side definitely jason john have you, have you implemented it or going to no we have we've implemented it and it works for us uh we give our customers a 10 percent discount on return visit um with production of their um, receipt and we probably get between 40 and 50 percent of them back yeah yeah um, I've got, I'm going to fly through some questions. So I'm just going to give one question for retail at the moment. So we can just get through because we've got quite a few here. So um, I don't know who would answer this for me, but um, Victoria's asked me about uh, natural beauty products. Uh, did you see an increase in traffic and what were customers interested in? So who would like to answer that? Well, we found that that, that really tailed off 
um, and is is it has not really come back to its former glory yet um, mm. at all. So uh, beauty hasn't really been something people have been, uh, from our perspective, not something people have been interested in. So um, I can't really answer that one. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, I've got an answer. Um, I've got a question that I think is going to be perfect for Alan here. Um, hey, it's um, a small brand, Alan, and I know you like supporting small brands. And he says uh, he, he actually liked what Lennon Mel was saying about supporting those brands that support independents. Um, and he says, how can an independent brand best support a health food shop? Alan, I know you support quite a lot of very emerging young brands what what would your um, response be to that um well yeah i, I mean we, we've always been keen to champion small upcoming uh, brands and give them space in the store because uh, quite often uh, it, it's really difficult to get a, a a foothold somewhere so i i i would just say that any small brands that are in, in effect pitching to me uh, just make sure that you come prepared. You know, quite often we get emails and it, it, they all start kind of the same way. Um, we've identified you as being da 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 da. You know, and it's like you have to do a little bit better than that. Uh, I really want um, uh, these, you know, uh, emerging brands if they want to come to our stores, we'll support them. But they have to really, uh, they have to sell themselves mm. um, and make make the effort and. When they send an email off, include everything. You know, yeah. not, not I, I don't want clickbait. Whereas, oh well, that looks interesting. I'm going to have to go back to them. I just want everything. Yeah. In the email yeah. To make a, an informed, uh, uh, you know, yeah. Because you're, you're no different to the big buyers who would expect all that no. as a first no. meeting, right? They want to know, you know, about your proposition and you, you know, what you've got and in a professional manner. It's quite, and, yeah. uh, absolutely, <laughs> and, you know, you, you want to know that uh, it's it's a long term relationship, and you're going to work mm. together. Yeah. Uh, um, Can I also just add on that that, like you say, it is a long term relationship. So please remember who supported you. Yeah. As a small independent, you know, if if you get your product out to the independent shops and we grow your brand with you, don't then sell out to the supermarket and leave us behind. Or if yeah. you're going to do that, <laughs> at least yeah, be upfront about yeah. that. <laughs> Um, that, that, that's a long time discussion that's been going on. <laughs> I don't think we'll end it today but uh, I think I think you've been hearing loud and clear um household and baby products um questions on how that's Jason and John do you have household and baby products with you we do have household products yeah we, yeah. we do in Culver range and we do uh, method. method um it's not a fantastic seller it's in the store. It's there for obviously the customers to buy, but it's not a big, um, a big range. You know, it's not, it's not going to make any uh, difference to our business. Um, baby products, we don't do any baby products in store. But like they were saying about like the, the beauty range within the stores, that's really non-existent really at the moment. Sales are very slow on that. I found, we found our sales for household, obviously we have a refill sections in all the shops for household yeah. and toiletries. That's actually stayed quite level, um, yeah. you know, um, but in regards to pre-packaged, not, not so much, like, like Jason and John said. Yeah. I've got some um, really good questions. Thank you, Callum, by the way, for your question, but I'll come back to that. Callum Eddy in Scotland. Um, what is your advice? This is an interesting one for all of you, especially Jason, well, of course, you two remember, but Jason and John is. What is your advice? Um, for, oh, well, it's for if you're just starting up a health store. So, Jason and John, and come to you with that. So, is if there's people out there just about to open up or get the plans ready, what advice would you give them? It's knowledge. It comes down to knowledge. It comes down to where they're actually setting up their store, and obviously, do background, obviously checks to see what the footfall's like and everything like that. Um, but it comes down to product knowledge as well. Product knowledge is key. Um, having a team that are trained in store as well. Um, and what else would you say, John? You've got, you've, you've got to research yeah. your area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And obviously, well, there's a lot of areas we looked at yeah. um, several times. Don't know, don't know. They say location, location, location. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't say for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Just making sure you don't do it opposite one that's already there. 
that was a that was a written adage before is it in law but i don't know well, that's another story so um let's talk about are you all um can i ask you if you've all got online sales at all that's a question from one of our um, viewers at the moment um, Alan, do you do you sell online no Len? not at the moment we, we did the, the kind of call and collect where we had a, a kind of list of generic items on our information site where people could see like flour and pasta and call up and ask us if we had any and we deliver it to them. Um, but no, you know, we're, we're potentially looking at doing a, a click and collect where we offer our products online so people can see the full range and then come in the next day or, you know, a couple of days to pick them up. Um, but that's about as far as it is, as it is at the moment. Yeah. Jason, John, are you online or? Yeah, we are online. It needs a lot. I mean, it's, it's in the process of being updated because the, the one thing with online is it does take a lot of time. Um, you know, obviously put the products on the system. Um, but I mean, it works. It's just updating the website now. Yeah. Um, but that probably is two to three weeks away when it's completed. We do have online sales and we do have click and collect. Yeah. Yeah, I think the psych. I don't know about you guys, but I think the psychology of click and collect is going to be um, probably stay with us in the future, and mm. people are used to that. So that's good. Um, one one last thing, if I may, because I thank you all for your time. Um, but if we go to sustainability and packaging, you know, and that was all very much in the forefront uh, before the pandemic, um, and probably you know. I don't know about through the pandemic, but let me ask you, do you do you sell refills and have they increased over the pandemic or are you planning to sell more refills or package free? Um, Alan, oh, sorry, Mel. No, go on. No, sorry. Um, we like I say, we have refills in, in all the stores. I wouldn't say it increased over yeah. the There's pandemic. There's a bit of it with the, with the um, people... People coming in and not sure whether to use it or not. Yeah, but, but and and a bit with them because we have food refills as well. So that I mean they were popular, but I think personally, looking over the pandemic, um, you know, plastic free and sustainability just went out the window for most people uh, for for a period of time last year. Everyone was just you know going a bit crazy. But um, I and I uh, we did a refills of hand sanitizer, which obviously went down very well. Um, but I don't think it, you know, it's not necessarily an area that you'd look, you'd look to grow, certainly based on what it's done in the last 12 months. I hope it comes back. Yeah, um, I think it will, but it will take a bit of time. Alan? Yeah, just uh, the the um, household refills, you know, wash up liquid, laundry liquids. Um, we do quite well with them. Uh, mm. Much the same kind of views as uh, as. Uh, Mel, they didn't really grow particularly any more than anything else during the pandemic. Mm. We were expanding it. We're definitely not looking to go into, uh, you know, food or other unpackaged items. Uh, so I think we we do quite well with what we have, and mm. that's where we'll stay, I guess. <laughs> So we haven't seen, we've seen development of what was happening before the pandemic, but there's been no major shifts of of anything particular then through the pandemic because this you know maybe people are looking at more you know sustainability issues i mean we're ahead yeah. of the curve anyway aren't we in the public health trade so mm. not surprised so um you know my last question is uh let me just have a quick look because we've got lots coming in thank you again callum he's talking about we've got um some support from the scottish government for their online so i'll probably pick that up with you callum later um we're asking about market on healthy snacks and quick grab and go products. Um, I think with footfall down, guys, that, can we say that's probably challenging? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to anonymous attendee, but um, <coughs> we're getting back to normal and then it'll all start. So I suppose what last question then, and we'll finish off for everybody, is um, if you can give a message to with Brexit at the moment you know, um, and suppliers out there probably hurting a little bit with Brexit. How, are you, how is it affecting you and what would you say to them to help you through this? And what effects are you suffering, if any? I would, pay, I would say shop local, support independent, because we need you as much as anything. We need you on the street, obviously safe, but we need you. 
because mm. stores are closing down all around us mm. and then we're going to be left there with mm. nobody around and nobody's going to come to an empty town and shop, no. are no. they? So support us all, support independence because we are here for you lot. Yeah, absolutely. Here, here. I'll interpret that as supply and sales reps. You can visit Jason and John anytime. Thank you, Brexit. You struggling with any products or? Um, well, I, I don't know if I can really distinguish between what uh, we're we're struggling with as a result of Brexit or pandemic. Yeah. Uh, I think there's there's maybe a little bit of a smoke screen thing at the moment because I think as Brexit got closer and closer and closer, people, and I'm talking about suppliers, manufacturers, probably stockpiled stuff. So we, we've come through this first quarter of the year probably relatively unscathed because yeah. they, they're, they're, not, uh, they're not importing stuff. Um, it'll be interesting, I think, to see what happens uh, second quarter, third quarter, uh, when uh, I think we'll see the effects bite a bit more. That's oh, my yeah. view. But, but at the moment, I wouldn't really know what would, uh, you know, cause a shortage, whether it would be the pandemic or... Brexit. So you haven't had any products, that, one of your favourite products you can't get in stock at the minute then, Alan, I suppose Oh, Guinness. No, yeah. <laughs> Guinness. Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> you can get Guinness anywhere. On <laughs> you know, what, 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 what was going on? I, I, I trolled the streets looking for Guinness. <laughs> Couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> right, let him uh, last last that was the same question, but we'll wrap it up after this response then. Have you struggled to find any any products from your regular suppliers? Has it affected you at all? Like Alan said, it's impossible to pick out the the whether it's Brexit, whether it's suppliers. Um uh, we do know that most suppliers, as Alan said, stockpiled. So once that runs out, you know, it, we could see a different picture in quarter two. Um, but I think, you know, going from what Jason and John said, that going forward, it's just all about supporting each other, isn't it? That um, collaboration, supporting the local high street, supporting the independents. And, you know, we found going forward that, that being part of the NAHS has been, you know, hugely important for us. And we hope to, um, you know, continue with that and urge health stores to all be members of the NAHS because then we can be stronger together as a collaborative and you know help help all stores to to come together I think that's really important. Thank you for mentioning that and can I refer me to the counterculture the wonderful 90th anniversary session uh, celebrating the National Association of Health Stores and please if you're not a member they can save you lots of money at the minute off your bottom line so please get in touch with them if you would. Can I just thank all my guests today have been amazing and thank you for your time really appreciate it and I think we probably would have been inundated with questions we might have to have round two at some point. So. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everybody. Thanks, thanks you, Carol. Thank we'll see thank you, you next Carol. Time. Thank so you. Thanks Bye. for your Bye. Bye. Bye.